Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In the last video, we created our login system. However, we were unable to test it because we couldn't register an account. So, in this video, we will be creating our register functions on the server and our register functions on the client side. So, I'm gonna jump into Game Maker. I'm going to go into our BTN register and into our left released event for our register button event click thingamajiggy. Um, I'm also going to open up my sample code here just so that I have something to work from as a reference to make sure that we get all of this code correct. The first thing we're going to do is our standard event inherited function at the top of our button click just so that if we do update our user interface framework in the future, our um, parent class will be able to do the functions that it needs to do. The next thing we need to do is something very similar to what we did in the login button. So I'm gonna copy paste it out of the login button and that is, we need this, um, basically we need it all. We need, the, we need the, the check to make sure that we've put some text in there into the username and into the password. And we also need the ability to create a packet and send that packet to the server. And we also need an error message if the text was left empty. So after I invent inherited, I'm gonna paste that in and I'm gonna change the word login packet to register packet. I'm gonna replace the instances of that in our code here. And I'm going to change the word login to register. And that will do it for our login, sorry, for our register event on our client side. So I'm going to save my changes and press OK. Save my game maker project and we'll jump back into the server side of things right now. So we need to deal with the register event. Thankfully, our user model is already dealing with the the register event for us. Um, it already has all of the code to create a new user and save that user into the database and it will save it into the database that we've specified that our client uses based on the configuration string that we put in our config.js file. So hopefully this will work perfectly. So jump back into packet.js under our register case where we've got do something. We can say something very similar to our user.login and it's going to be var data equals packet models and we're going to be using the register packet this time dot pass and we're going to pass that the data packet. Now obviously we don't have a register data model yet so we're going to go into our 00, zero data models sorry packet models in our initializers. We're going to copy the login packet. I'm going to add a final comma because this is a JSON object and we're going to change this one to register. So now we have the same packet defined twice, except one is for login and one is for regi register. Technically, we could use the login packet or we could even name this auth and just use it for both of them. But I'm trying to make this as straightforward and readable as possible for all of the younger viewers in my audience. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're a more advanced JavaScript user, please feel free to actually take these two and turn them both into auth. So from this point, we're going to go back to packet.js now that we have the username and password under our data object. And now we can say user.register. That's going to call our user models register function, which takes in data.username as the first parameter, data.password as the second parameter, and finally a callback function to deal with the result. And that will pass us back the result and it will also pass us back the user object, I think. If it doesn't, that will just stay null so it doesn't matter. Actually, no, it doesn't. So we'll just return the result from register, whether it was successful or not successful. If result was true, then we're going to send a packet back to the client that says, hey, thank you guys for registering. Otherwise, if it was false, we're going to send a data packet back to the client that says, I'm sorry, that is not allowed. That is not on. You cannot register on this server. No, sir. Um, so yeah, C dot socket, because we've got the client already in our interpret function. C dot socket dot write, packet dot build. And the parameters we'll pass to this are, first parameter is register. Second parameter is false to say that the registration was unsuccessful. I copy this up into our success condition and I change it from false to true to say that our registration was successful. And finally, I'll break so that we exit this case statement. And hopefully, I think if all is good in the world, that should work. So I'm gonna give that our first test. If there's any bugs, we will fix them up straight away. Um, so yeah, let's quickly stop and rerun our servers. 
So the server's now running. Let's jump back into Game Maker and bring up our client. There we go. So the client should pop up in a second. So I've left the console open here so we can see what happens if there's any errors. The first thing I'm going to do is click the login button to make sure that our validation is working. Click the register button to make sure our validation is working. And I'm going to try to log in with my account, rm2kdev. Password, one, two, three, four. Log in. And it says that we've received a packet. Log in, rm2kdev, password, one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to click register. And you see that we've received the packet register from rm2kdev, password, one, two, three, four. Obviously, nothing's happening on the client side yet because we haven't implemented any um, handling for the register packet and the login packet. But because we registered that account, if we bring up our database, we should be able to refresh the table and hopefully we'll have a user in there. And we don't. So I'm going to pause the video and find out why. Okay, sorry about that. Once again, that was just a me being stupid error. We've created all of these functions, but we actually haven't passed the data coming back from the server into our pass function. So we need to go into our client.js file under our this.data function, which is handling the data coming into the server. We're only console logging it. So we need to actually say this, sorry, not this, we need to say packet.pass. Uh, this is going to be our client because it is this client and the data is going to be data. So what we've essentially done here is outsourced our client's handling of data into the packet.js file that all clients will share. So I'm gonna reboot my server and we will reconnect the client and hopefully this time, hopefully it will work. I'm gonna try and register an account and we have an error that it cannot call right onto a socket that doesn't exist. So let's have a look why that's happening. I'll pause the video and I'll get back. Okay, I figured out what the problem was. Um, the issue was that our dot, this dot data, this dot error, and this dot end are being supplied to from server.js and the socket dot on. Um, so basically this no longer refers to this client, it refers to this as in the socket dot IO, sorry, not socket dot IO, the sockets, scope of the application so our functions didn't exist it's a sim quite a simple fix what we can do is we'll just do a little bit of refactoring inside our client.js file at the very top of it we'll say var client equals this and then in our initiate function we can get rid of the var client equals this so it doesn't have that anymore because now client has been defined when our client is created and in our this dot data we can instead of passing this we can pass in client so now the packet.pass will receive an instance of this client, which is all of these functions, as well as the socket, which has been appended to this um, and the user and the data that goes across to the server. So I'm just going to start my server again and we'll have a look at the game maker client. We'll run that up now. Now, if I try to register my account, rm2k dev password one, two, three, four, if I hit register, you'll see on the server now it says interpret register. So basically that means that it has gone through this.data into packet.pass. Packet.pass has successfully extracted the packet and sent it over to this.interpret where it's been interpreted as a register command and it will have gone down into this register function, executed this, which means that our user should exist in the database if I come to our database and refresh you'll see we now have one item in the database. If I open that item up, it is rm2k dev with a password of 1234. The other thing you can see is we have a sprite, the current room has been set, the position X and Y as well. So that's how we deal with um, our registration side of things. Now let's uh, double check to make sure our login works. So the way that we can double check to see if our login works, if we just add a little bit of um, a little change to our code over here. I'm just going to say console.log since we haven't implemented this on the client side yet. Login result. And I'm just going to space and I will put a plus result. So we should see a true or false or a one or a zero um, depending on what goes out into console.log. I'm not 100% on that actually. Uh, we'll have a quick look. So if I run the application again, the game, the client. Try to log in with rm2k dev password 1234. 
hit the login button and you see we have an error. That's because it's tried to call the enter room function which doesn't exist on our user. That's fine because the login result pops in, um, says that it was true. Uh, which means that that user did exist. And we'll be creating this enter room function in the next video where we actually start handling the login on the client side. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to like the video. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section below. Cheers, bye.